tell me a little bit about, uh, I know you were promoted, promoted to vice president 2021. Uh, tell me about when, when it was that you became president and, uh, you know, all the kind of the, the changes that came with that. Uh, I, I became president uh, two years ago, so I think it would be three years coming up uh, in 2024. But I think, you know, being the VP of HR and safety and regulatory compliance really prepared me for the position. You know, right. I mean, I have uh, run other companies in different industries, but I think being part of that portion of the vertical, uh, you, you know, in this company and being able to deal with all of the external things and then kind of getting ingrained in, in all the regulatory things that uh, companies in our industry deal with helped me to better understand how, uh, you know, the things that we do really work with our, our customers. Um, so it was, it was a good, you know, uh, kind of lead into being president for sure. Right. Yeah. Good training ground because people, uh, are most important in any operation, especially these days, right? You've got to have good qualified people. You want to keep them, you want to uh, uh, attract them as much as you can. Second, the re regulatory things are, are you know, moving every day and uh, adding things every day. And you really got to be on top of that. So like you said, pretty good training ground to uh, eventually, uh, like you said, come up and, and be the, uh, you know, to, to be the, uh, to, to run the organization with that. How many people do you have working for you total now? At CRC. We have uh, 75 as of this morning, but you know, really? it changes daily. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. 75 as of, right, as of today. So right. we're usually in 70, 75 range. Right. Um, you were hired, when you were hired as president, the owners, what, what, what were the main tasks they want you to do? What were the, the direction that they wanted you to take at things? And what was the, at the top of the list or second and third that they wanted you to do? Well, there, there were some legacy issues that we had environmentally with the company and the previous ownership. Uh, I, I think, and I don't think it's very um, odd in this industry or outside the box that, you know, there are regulatory issues that each one of the job shops in this uh, service finishing industry deal with. And we have the same thing. So the number one thing was to come in and, and put us on a path where we are uh, strictly compliant. We're dealing with past issues. Uh, which we have done, um, which is has been our main focus, obviously, to be good stewards. Um, and then the next was to grow the business. Uh, you know, we were looking at all kinds of ways to um, to continue to be a one-stop shop. Uh, we have mm -hmm. uh, large capacity. We have a 65,000 plus square feet of, of a footprint to, to use. Uh, so we've repurposed some. We're currently looking at... Uh, certainly growing the business by adding additional processes um, and or, um, you know, looking to partner or purchase other companies. Right. Right. I never, when I visited you all years ago, aerospace was huge. Aerospace was always a big part with a lot of companies. Uh, you know, what is driving your industry now, your business now, I should say, and what are you maybe hoping to get more of? It seems like, uh, you know, there's a lot of different out in out west. There's a lot of different opportunities to get into. What what are some that uh, that uh, you that have sort of caught your eye that you really want to kind of develop more? Certainly, aerospace defense is uh, is the largest portion of our, our business. Um, but you know, we're strategically located in Phoenix in the Southwest market. Uh, semiconductor industry is is a, a huge boom here. We have TSMC that's coming in from Taiwan. They're building, I think, the largest yeah. facility in the United States uh, for semiconductor manufacturing. So that has a, its benefits along the ecosystem here in, in, in the Southwest. And we're looking to uh, be a part of that uh, in some way, shape, or form. So we're redoing some things to our facility to make it more uh, uh, beneficial for semiconductor. Uh, mm -hmm. We're adding processes that are specifically um, useful to the semiconductor industry. Uh, so we we plan on, on jumping on that that train and ride as long as we possibly can. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, very, very, a lot of, lot of business propping up there with you all uh, out that way. Um, and I know, I think I saw where you all had added a new sim, uh, silver process. Is that right? You've been, you, you mentioned you were adding some things. What are some things that you've been adding? Yeah, we added like, uh, Silver Semi Bright, uh, one of our customers, was uh, sitting there parts across the country for this specific process. 
Mm-hmm. And so we we partnered with them and looked up the specs and 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 took about about six months to put it in. Um, but it's been it's been beneficial in our relationship with that particular customer. So we're looking to find out what the pain points are for our customers. And if it makes sense and we have room, we'll add the process for them here so right. they can, um, you know, they obviously don't have to ship it very far. Lead times go down and we, we always work with pricing. We're, we're, we're not looking to uh, gouge any particular customer. We'll work with customers as long as they give us a good target. Um, we'll work with them on pricing. Right, right. Yeah. You mentioned, uh, you know, your background in HR and in people. Uh, and, and what's been sort of the secret to some successes for you all to, to keep and maintain, uh, you know, a staff because it, you know, a lot of shops I hear, you know, they want to expand, they want to get bigger, they want to do, take on more work. And that's what sort of stops them is they don't seem to have a, a, a very, you know, a, a, you know, they lose people and everything, but it seems like you guys have maintained who you've got out there and, uh, what seems to be the secret to doing that? Yeah, we, we do have a very tenured crew. But I'm sure, just like any other company in, in this industry, you have that entry level um, kind of stratosphere that, that continues to turn over. And so what we've done is, is we've implemented what I call people, not parts. And mm-hmm. we, are, we are laser focused on our, cu- on our customers, which is for us is our employees. If we right. take care of our employees and, and can build a bench, our customers will be taken care of. Um, so we've done things that probably seem mundane, but mm-hmm. mean a lot to our employees. Mm-hmm. We've redone the entire floor in our in our uh, ship receiving area where all of our employees walk in. We've created new lighting. We purchased uh, brand new, very expensive ovens to replace the ones that we have. Um, so when our customers our employees, what we call our customers as well, walk in, they feel like it's a place that it's not just work. It's a place where they can kind of chit chat and feel comfortable. We completely right. redid the, both the men's and res, men's and women's restrooms. Um, when I worked at some other industries, uh, it seems seems boring, but the restrooms were nice. You know, we don't want people right. to hang in there forever, but we want right. you to feel comfortable uh, and using the restroom wherever you work at. And I, that right. was a sticking point at another company I worked at. They changed it. They did. Then the employee surveys went through the roof just because you redid the restrooms. Right. And so we've done the same right. thing. We, we spent a lot of money fixing the restrooms. Right. Um, yeah. It, it sends a definitive message to them, right? That you are, they are top of mind to you. Yes. Uh, you want to make sure they're happy. Uh, they enjoy coming and doing their work. And the place is, is pleasant where they're going to. Which a lot of shops sometimes don't see that. Yeah, yeah. We've so, uh, yeah. we've completely revamped our pay scale. Mm-hmm. We're paying for um, uh, outside training for our employees. I mean, there are a lot of things that we're doing that are strictly focused on, you know, making sure that we we treat our customers, our employees, um, the best we possibly can. Right, right. Yeah, definitely with that. And uh, you know, I know that uh, you know, uh, you know, when a couple of years ago when you guys had a kind of sort of a management changeover. Uh, there was a lot of big names that you all added to your board of directors, right? Some very, you know, yeah. famous names, you know, uh, in the military and aerospace and things like that. What was, you know, I know that the owners did it, but can you kind of, what was the reasoning behind that and how has it worked out for you all with that? The, the expertise and the, the ability to network inside the government, inside the military with the names of the individuals on our board has been uh, a gold mine for us. Uh, you know, we, if we uh, need insight before something happens, sometimes we can get a hold of that. Um, if we are having an issue, uh, you know, we always get good feedback from uh, uh, from our board, and particularly our employees really understand when they come and speak to us, which they have, uh, that they get a real understanding on where our services are being put in place and how that affects the 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 um, the military out in the field and what we do. Um, so it's been a good opportunity for us to kind of make that link between the end product that we do and what we do in, in tanks across the street on the shop floor. 
Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, you know, CRC has been known for very many years, a very, you know, one of the most efficient, proficient, well-run organizations. And, and like I said, you've been there for a, a long time too. Uh, that's something I think you guys take very much pride in, correct? That your, your facility is very well thought of. Your, your staff is very well thought of. Very smart people that you all have working there. Seems like. Yeah, absolutely. We've, we've been here, you know, 70 plus years and over 33 different plus processes trying to be a one-stop shop here in the, in the Southwest. Um, so it, it, it's a point of pride for us. Uh, we, we have, uh, you know, our history around the facility. We have our former owners, uh, kind of, I'm looking at his, his, his picture on our conference room. We named it after him, uh, Richard Allen Burge. Um, he was the one that actually brought this company to kind of the next level. And then our current ownership, obviously we're taking it to the, to even the high, a higher level, but we, we take pride in, in who we are in, in the chem research name in the Valley and, uh, anything we can do to, to strengthen that relationship with our customer base, we do it. All right. All right. I remember when I was there years ago, you all, and I don't know how much, whether it's still in operation, but you all were setting up a pretty sophisticated, or it looked to me like a customer service call center that people could, when they called in, I didn't know if you, if you guys flushed it out or you're still got that, but I remember that going in, you were in, in the, in the, in the midst of planning that out. Is that something you're still doing with that or? Yeah, we're, we're actually, we, we're upgrading our EMS system uh, as we speak, which would, which does include uh, upgrading the customer service experience on finding uh, without calling where their parts are, how long it takes, that kind of thing. Um, we're laser focused on a few things, obviously is on time delivery. Quality is always number one. That's, that's a, you know, that's, that's a given. Uh, customer is not going to come back if their quality isn't good. But our on-time delivery is uh, we are laser focused on making sure that we deliver the parts back to our customers um, beyond their expectation. Right, right. Uh, you know, you, so like I said, you've been adding some process. Like I said, I've got the sil silver. Uh, what else do you hope to do? What are you planning on doing, if anything? I mean, it sounds like you got 33 processes. That's That's a lot to begin with right there. Uh, you know, like I said, to be that one-stop uh, uh, facility you want to be. Anything that you've got some plans for in the future here coming up? Or that... We'll certainly be add, adding uh, electric nickel PTFE. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll be adding uh, uh, electric nickel boron. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a uh, boron uh, coat deposit in there. Uh, there's a electric nickel diamond coating. Uh, it's a coat deposit of diamond for essentially the mining industry. Uh, so those are three specifically that we'll be adding. Um, another one we'll be adding is uh, trivalent chrome. We do hex chrome, but as mm -hmm. you know, there's the environmental issues that go on with hex chrome. So we'll be adding trichrome along with that. So we'll be able to do both uh, until, I mean, there are a lot of legacy programs that will not move from hex chrome. So we'll continue right. to use that, but we'll move also into trichrome. And we're in the process of moving tanks right now to add that process. And the last one, the last two we're seriously considering is uh, black oxide, mm. uh, which is uh, something we haven't done before, obviously, but there's a, there's a strong demand for it. And then the last one is gold. Uh, mm. uh, I've been to a couple conferences and, and you know, gold is something that is that we've done before in the past at Kim Research, mm -hmm. uh, but it went away a decade or two ago. Um, so right. we're looking at uh, replacing, putting that back in into service. Right. Gotcha. Very interesting. Yeah, like I said, uh, I, uh, adding those, those are very popular now. E EN, like you said, the PT, and then uh, you know, you know the, the black oxide. It seems like a big pushback to, to that again, and uh, it's uh, you know, not a lot of people do that sometimes. It's yeah, it's it's you know a hot hot mixture, and people don't want to kind of uh, they, they don't want to do the risk with that. But uh, yeah, so. Is that something that's customer driven for you all? Is that they're they're asking you, or are you, are you trying to see down the line? Where you, you know, all be? these all the things that we're we're looking at are customer driven. We're not we're not driving the customer anywhere. Uh, we're we're you know we we have on our website a little one minute survey for our customers to fill out what processes that they're looking for that we don't do. Um, mm -hmm. So these are the places that our customers are driving us, and then we'll reach back and see what what their uh, EAU is, and then. Uh, uh, we'll move from there. But those are certainly processes that have been asked for 
that would be significant for us and our customers.